namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase today we are going to learn about the nine qualities of the buddha they are called itipiso uh, bhagava arham samma sambuddho and so forth we will uh, chant this uh, together or you can chant while i am chanting as well and uh, we will start with the introduction so let's uh, let's put that on the screen now so we are going to talk about the qualities of the buddha and uh, that it's the second most chanted verse of the um, of any chant that has been chanted by monks so it's part of the daily chanting it's part of the it's part of any chanting uh, sometimes the evening chanting the morning chanting namo tassa is for sure the the most important it's in front of every single book and it's in front of every dhamma talk as i have just chanted myself before this dhamma talk here so we'll talk about the nine qualities of the Pali verse. We'll talk about the three qualities of Namo Tassa. In the last video, I have already explained the Namo Tassa. So uh, if you haven't watched that video, please do so, because we will be uh, not going into much detail uh, for the first three qualities of the Buddha. And we'll give a brief explanation of the of the remaining six. Now you can see me here. And uh, let's go to the next slide. So we have the verse. Iti piso bhagava arham samma sambuddho vinja charana sambhano sugeto loka vidu anuttaro purise dhamma sarati satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati so that is the verse, and now we will talk about Namo Tassa. So before we talked about Namo Tassa, Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhase, and we had talked about the grammar. So this is the dative case of, of these uh, first three qualities of the Buddha, of the nine qualities. And if we go and take away the dative case, we have the nominative case, we have uh, just the blessed one. Instead of to the blessed one, we have the blessed one. We have uh, the arham. I will explain what Bhagava is in more detail. The worthy one is the arham, and it means uh, greed, hatred, and delusion are permanently removed, and they're permanently eradicated. They cannot come back. Samma Sambuddho is the fully self-enlightened one, and this is the Buddha that you know and love. He is the one who has discovered the teachings and he is the perfectly self-enlightened uh, being, or we could say the Buddha. So this is the Samma Sambuddho. And uh, this is, uh, these are the first three qualities. And now we're gonna go into the ETP So ETP So uh, is it starts with iti piso bhagava arham samma sambuddho etc etc and uh, it means iti iti actually is is like a quotation character it is said but here and so means uh, it doesn't mean so like in English so this is what he is it means he it means it's a pronoun and it's in the nominative case but the commentaries actually say that because of this reason, he is the Arham, he is the Bhagava, he is the Samma Sambuddha, and so, so forth for all of the qualities of the Buddha. So, Iti Piso, you can, you can use this translation or you can say, uh, he, it, you know, he, he is, he has these qualities, etc. It is said, or because of this is better to, to know. So we have iti piso bhagava arham samma sambuddho, and this is uh, covered in the namo tassa. And now we have the six remaining qualities of the Buddha. 
We have Vidya Charana Sampano, Sugato, Loka Vidu, Anuttaro Purise Dhamma Sarati, Satha Deva Manusanam, Buddho Bhagavati. And the Bhagava is in the in parentheses because we have just covered it in the in the beginning. So it's mentioned twice in the verse, and when we actually talk about the meaning, we talk about the Bhagava. So I briefly covered in the Namotasa, Namotasa Bhagavato. So the Bhagava is has these qualities. Actually, that's that's how it is. And then the Bhagava, Bhagava is also another quality covered in the end, and we'll actually cover that as well. But to make it easier, we only have six qualities that we have to cover because the last video covered the first three. So then we have the Vidya Charana Sampano. And what does Vidya Charana Sampano mean? We can break it into three words. Vidya means knowledge, Charana means conduct, and Sampano means endowed with. So. The Buddha is endowed with the knowledge and conduct. What types of knowledges? He has eight vidya. Vidya is knowledges. And we can uh, go over them uh, very briefly because it's a long list and you're not going to be able to remember them. But it's the six kinds of direct knowledge together with insight and the supernormal powers of the mind-made body. So normally uh, we can uh, break it up into vipassana jnana and mano maya iddhi. And uh, these are the last two I mentioned in the translation. And so we have iddhi, if you look at the bottom of the line, we have iddhi, id, iddhi vidda. And this is just psychic powers. The diva sota is, uh, is uh, being able to hear celestial sounds or sounds from other dimensions, we could say, other realms. Uh, Cheto Pariyanyana is uh, the ability to read uh, the mind of other beings. Pube Niwasa is the ability to know one's own past lives and to know the other, other beings' past lives and to see them arising and passing away. And then we have the Diva, diva Chaku is being able to not only hear but to see other realms and celestial realms, devas, beings, petas, uh, hungry ghosts, etc., and being able to see people in hell as well, and uh, and even in the Brahma planes. Asavakaya, asa, uh, there's a little spelling mistake. Asavakaya jnana, and uh, this is uh, knowing that the uh, asavas, which are what we call the effluence or the the outflows or the negative qualities, we could say, uh, that they have been completely destroyed. This, this is the knowledge of becoming an arhant. And uh, vipassana jnana, vipassana jnana is the knowledge of the vipassana jnanas. These are the insight knowledges. And starting with uh, nama rupa paricheta jnana, this is uh, mind and matter and breaking up mind and matter and seeing them separately all the way up to Sankara Upekanyana, to seeing the formations with the equanimity, all formations, being able to see all formations with ec equanimity. Then uh, Mano Maiddi is uh, the ability to uh, make the, the body appear in another place. And uh, these are the, the knowledges. Basically, what you can remember is that they are the psychic powers, and uh, yeah, the psychic powers and the knowledge is uh, that's uh, in the vipassana and the ability to become an arhant to destroy all the uh, effluence and the uh, defilements. And so that's the, the best psychic power as well. We could say the mental ability actually. And now we have the 15 charanas. This is the conduct. To understand what this means, you can just know that it is the, uh, the practice, and this also includes the restraint in the sense faculties and the morality, and also the practice of concentration. The Vipassana knowledges are covered in the knowledges, the vidya. 
Vidya Charana Sampano. So I'm going to read this to you. You can pay attention to this, but you won't remember all of these. But it's good to just have this as background information. It's restraint by virtue, guarding the sense door faculties, the knowledge of the right amount of eating, devotion to wakefulness, the seven good states, the four jhanas, this is a samatha concentration of the fine material sphere. And so you just have to know that uh, vidya charna sampano is having the knowledge and conduct. Now I explained that we have the seven states so let's uh, talk about those. It's faith, consciousness, shame, learning, energy, mindfulness, and understanding. So you see shame there. Shame in the Western world is a negative quality, to be shameful. But actually in Buddhism and Abhidhamma and in the suttas as well, we have Hiri Otapa. These are the protectors of the world. And when we're shameful to do wrong things by ourselves or by uh, other people, the fear of seeing other people, knowing other people will know what we're thinking, even thinking or doing, uh, this is a protector. This is a protector for ourselves. So this is a positive quality. So we have vidya charana sampano, and you just have to remember that it's knowledge and conduct. And now when you say, when you see the knowledge and conduct, being endowed with knowledge and conduct, you can understand that it's much wider than the two words, knowledge and conduct. So if you can, you can, you can re-watch the video and you can, you can uh, jot down some of these, you can even memorize some of these, it's, it's good to know. But the main thing is knowledge and conduct for vidya charana sampanno. Sugato. Sugato means it's well gone. Let me uh, actually chant the the let me chant the verse for you each time. I want to do that. Itipiso Bhagavaraham Samma Sambuddho Vinja Charana Sambano Sugato Lokavidu Anuttaro Parisa Dhamma Sarati Satta Deva Manusanam Buddho Bhagavati. So, one of those was Sugato. That means well gone. It's very important to understand that the Buddha has fulfilled his purpose and then he went to Parinibbana. Parinibbana, actually, the, fulfilling the purpose of the Buddha is he has made the Aditana, the determination to become a Buddha. He's a bodhisattva, bodhisattva, and you might know this as bodhisattva. Bodhisattva, bodhisattva, they are the same words, except we prefer bodhisattva because it is defined according to Theravada Buddhism. In other traditions, I think they, they define it in certain other ways, making uh, the Samma Sambuddho um, easier to attain, or Buddhahood, I'm not really sure of that. But uh, when we say bodhisattva, we automatically know what that means, because this is the Pali definition, and this is uh, uh, very important. So we have what they call four asankhya and a hundred thousand, and uh, this uh, is a very, very long time. Actually, it's a four asankhya mahakapas and uh, 100,000 uh, Mahakapas as well. So what we have here is, um, is we can th visualize this as the Big Bang, the Big Bang of, uh, of the universe. And it expands, 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 and sp expands, and expands, and then due to gravity, and this will take a very long time, the, all the planets and stars will come together, and they will join together, and then they will explode again. And uh, this uh, is a long time, and there's many, many, many lifetimes uh, for this to happen. It's actually probably longer. Uh, we don't know exactly. And uh, so, yeah, it's a very long time. And through all these lifetimes, the Buddha has been developing himself, developing his parami, his good qualities, so that he can be 
uh, Samma Sambuddho. The purpose of that is to teach people. The purpose of a Samma Sambuddho is to teach people. There are two different types of Buddhas, the Pacheka Buddha, a Samma Sambuddho. The Samma Sambuddho is one that teaches, and it's very rare to arise in the world. So the Buddha has arisen in the world, and, it, and he has taught, and then Parinibbana happened after he, his death, Chuti Chitta. So he has fulfilled this purpose, and he has, he has traveled a long way through samsara and developed himself, and then he has reached uh, Parinibbana. When I say Parinibbana, Parinibbana is not a place where the Buddha lives. Uh, Parinibbana is a representation of the extinguishment of the five khandhas, or more importantly, the, the four nama khandhas. The, uh, the materiality of the Buddha still exists in, the, in the, what we call the Buddha rupas, or the relics of the Buddha. Uh, the body parts of the Buddha, they're very well venerated. Even like a hair, a hair of the Buddha is well venerated. This is also in uh, Shwedagam Bhagoda. In, in Myanmar. It's one of the greatest uh, pagodas in Myanmar, the most venerated pagoda in Myanmar. So uh, these material, uh, the material khanda, the material uh, aggregate, we could say, of the Buddha still exists today. But the nama khanda, the, the mentality of the, the Buddha, uh, no, longer, no longer exists. Actually, the mind and matter is always arising and passing away, arising, passing away, at billions of times per second, and, or more than billions of times per second. And when the arahant, which the Buddha is, who has destroyed greed, hatred, and delusion, when he dies, the, this namakanda, this nama, this mentality, can no longer arise again. This is what we call Parinibbana. The, there is no more arising of the mentality that wants to continue. When someone is not enlightened, when someone still has greed, hatred, and delusion, and has not fully eradicated them, then for sure when someone dies, that momentum will cause another, what we call, rebirth-linking process to happen. And this is how samsara works. So the Buddha is gone, and he's also traveled well, and, and, and he's uh, gone through uh, eons and eons of samsara uh, to develop himself, and then to finally be gone. And so that's what well gone means. It also means well spoken. Well spoken is, uh, is another uh, explanation of what Sugato means. And uh, the commentaries does that uh, a lot, and they, they talk about the different uh, qualities uh, and different ways to look at different words. The Buddha is well-spoken, and there are many ways the Buddha is well-spoken, but the most important thing to remember is that the Buddha always spoke what was beneficial. That is the most important thing to remember about uh, Sugato. So... The next one is loka we do, and let's uh, chant again. Iti piso bhagava arham samma sambuddho Vinja charana sambano sugato loka we do Anuttaro purise dhamma sariti Satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati Loka we do it's the most important thing is to know that the Buddha has traveled through samsara and he has tried to find the beginning of the universe, the beginning of samsara and to the end of samsara. And he knows that there is no discoverable beginning to be found through samsara. The only way it ends is through the knowledge of Nibbana, the attainment of Nibbana and most importantly, Parinibbana. So that is the most, thing to, the most important thing to know about loka we do. Tiloka. Tiloka is also uh, part of the knowledge of the, the Buddha when we talk about loka we do. Loka means world, and we do is the knower. And so we have the sankara loka, the conditioned world, 
we have Satta Loka, the world of beings, and O O Kasa Loka, the world of space. The Sankara Loka is the mind and matter, mind and matter, all conditioned uh, mind and matter, and Paticca Samapada, which is also the uh, dependent origination, showing that everything has a cause. All the conditioned elements have cause, mind, and matter. And this is how the samsara continues again and again and again. And again, it doesn't end until Parinibbana. The Satta Loka is the 31 planes of existence. Now that's a lot to, to cover in this lesson. So the most important thing to know is that we have the six groupings of the 31 planes. We have the hell realms, we have the peta realms, the, the ghost realms, we have the animal realm, the human realm, we have the deva realm, the, the, the heavenly realm, and we have the brahma realm, which is the realm of the attainments, those who attain samadhi concentration. So you just have to know these six qualities, these six, uh, these six groupings of the 31 planes of existence. And then we have uh, the okasa loka, and this is the, uh, the spatial uh, planes of existence uh, for these uh, six realms, we could say, or the 31 planes of existence, the spatial interdimensional realms that exist but we cannot see. So then we have uh, Anuttaro Parisadhamma. Itipi so bhagavar ham samma sam buddho vinja charana sam vanno sugeto loka vidu anuttaro purise dhamma sarati satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati. So we have anuttaro purise dhamma sarati. So what that means is anuttaro means incomparable. The Buddha is incomparable to all other beings because he has developed his parami for such a long time, as we explained before. We have Prisadhamma Sarati. Now, Sarati means a trainer or charioteer. And uh, Dhamma, Dhamma is different from Dhamma. Can you hear the difference? Dhamma and Dhamma. So Dhamma is the teaching. I'm giving a Dhamma talk with a D-H. This doesn't have the H, if you can see that on the screen. It's Dhamma. And that means, uh, that means uh, being tameable. It comes from the verb Dhammeti. Parisa can be a man, but it can also refer to a woman. It can refer to uh, an animal or even Nagas. So there's many stories of where the Buddha has tamed uh, so many different beings who are tameable. And one of the stories uh, that is commonly used, especially for a man, is the story of Angulimala. Angulimala, Anguli means finger, and uh, Mala means necklace. And there was a very dangerous killer who was named Angulimala because he killed many, many people. He made a vow to kill 1,000 people. And what he would do is, he, in order to keep track of how many people he killed, he would cut the finger off one person that he killed, and then he would string a necklace from that. And so that was uh, what he did in how he got his name, Angulimala. And he had 999 victims, and he had 999 fingers that he wore around his neck. And uh, uh, the Buddha was going to be the number 1,000. But uh, everyone told the Buddha, don't go into this uh, area because Angulimala is there. And uh, he, said, he, sa he said he was not afraid, and he went to that area where Angulimala was. Angulimala saw him and he immediately thought, this is my trophy, my trophy killing that I can do for my last, for my last killing, my last murder. And uh, he was chasing after him and the Buddha was just walking slowly. But no matter how fast Angulimala chased after him, he just wasn't able to catch up. This is because of the psychic power 
abilities of the Buddha. And the Angulimala said, stop, stop. And the Buddha said, I'm stopped. I stopped a long time ago, but you're still, you're still going. And what he meant was about the samsara and, uh, and how he is continuing to just uh, continue, continuing to increase his akusla kama and keep the perpetual samsara going forever and ever. He was able to come to his senses and to become tamed. And that's why we say anuttaro parisadhamma sarati. Sarati also means charioteer, sort of like taming a, a horse. Uh, the charioteer, he knows how to train the horse and tame. Tame is m more, more important as well. So we have satta deva manusanam. So let's uh, chant again. Iti piso bhagavar ham samma sambuddho Vinja charna sampano sugato loka vidu Anuttaro purisa dhamma sarati Satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati So we have satta deva manusanam Satta means teacher and when we use the word satta to re reference a teacher we automatically think of the Buddha when we say that. Another word is acharya. And uh, this also means teacher, but this is usually a monk. Uh, we have, uh, in Myanmar, we have dhammacharyas. So these are uh, teachers, uh, certified teachers who've passed exams, who are able to teach the, the dhamma. We have deva. Deva is heavenly be beings. I've said this before. And we have manusa, humans. It's Sometimes we want to say man because it has manusa in it. Manusa nam means of humans and of devas. This is the uh, genitive or dative case, but in this case it's the genitive case in the plural form. And when we think about the teaching of teachings of devas and men, the Dhammachaka Pawatana Sutta, the first teaching of the Buddha, where he set the Dhamma the Dhamma wheel turning, the first teaching of the Buddha. He had uh, taught to the first five disciples, but the devas were listening. And although only one of his disciples was able to get the first level of attainments uh, to become enlightened, a Sotabana, stream winner, there were uncountable devas that were able to attain the uh, the full enlightenment. So we can say that the Buddha was the teachers of devas and men. Obviously, all the suttas that we have, these were the teachers of humans. And, uh, and uh, we also have some suttas where it was specifically taught towards devas, the heavenly beings. And the most famous of that is the Mangala Sutta. The Mangala Sutta is the sutta on what is the highest blessing. Maha Mangala Sutta, actually. The devas were arguing with each other and they wanted to know what is the highest blessing. What does one have to do in order to get the highest blessing? And so then the Buddha, he explained that there is no such thing as good fortune or luck, but it's what you do. You do good things and good things will come back to you. And he mentioned 38 things. So maybe we'll talk about that later. So the main thing to know is that he is the teacher, the greatest teacher of both humans and heavenly beings. And also Brahma beings as well. So we have Buddha, we're almost finished. Iti piso bhagavar ham samma sam buddho Vinja charna sambano sugeto loka vidu Anuttaro purise dhamma sarati Satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati So we have buddho. The buddha means the awakened one. But... Uh, we should know that although an arhant is also a Buddha, we should understand the Buddha as the, as the one who has 
self discovered the Four Noble Truths. We have the Chattari Satchani, you can see that in the Pali. Yasma wa Chattari Satchani Atanapi Bhuchi. That means that uh, because he has, uh, he is the one who dis by himself discovered or came to knowing the uh, Four Noble Truths, uh, and he was able to teach other people to gain enlightenment. For this reason, because of this, he is called the Buddha. This is in the commentaries. For uh, this, the Itibiso Bhagava, for this phrase, and what Buddha means. So it's very important to know this as well. And as I said before, there is the Pacheka Buddha, one who does not teach, and then there is the, uh, the Samma Sambuto. Then we have Bhagava, so we can finish. Iti piso bhagavara ham samma sambuddho Vinja charana sambhano sugeto loka vidu Anuttero purise dhamma sarati Satta deva manusanam buddho Bhagavati So we have the Bhagava, and this means the Blessed One. This is the very last of the nine qualities. We had talked about this in Namotasa, Namotasa Bhagavato. We also touched on it at the very beginning when we mentioned this for the first three qualities. Uh, we call them the first three qualities, but it's actually the ninth quality. And we call him the blessed one or the fortunate one. So you should know that uh, being blessed means that you're very fortunate. But as I said before, he has made the determination throughout samsara to become the Buddha. We could say the four big bangs, but even longer than that. To develop his parami. And when you do good things, you have good things come back to you. And so that's, um, that's what makes him such an incredible, incredible being. And we call him the fortunate one because he has developed his parami, his wonderful qualities, through the course of time through many, many, many lives. And with that, with his present life, his final life, he was able to have this incredible knowledge and conduct and all the qualities that we just talked about. And because of that, he's the Bhagavan. So now we're uh, finished with the nine qualities. So we're going to chant the verse one last time. We're going to talk about, we're going to think about the meaning and uh, we'll have a translation. We'll talk again about why it's important. And we'll also talk about the uh, practice of uh, reflecting on the Buddha's qualities. Itipi so bhagavarham samma sambuddho vinja charana sambhano sugeto loka vidu Anuttero purise dhamma sarati satha deva manusanam buddho bhagavati. One more time. Iti piso bhagavarham samma sambuddho vinja charana sambhano sugeto loka vidu anuttero purise dhamma sarati satha deva manusanam buddho Bhagavati. Of course, we have to do everything three times. Iti piso bhagavarham samma sambuddho vinja charana sambhano sugeto loka vidu anuttero purise dhamma sarati satha deva manusanam buddho bhagavati. So we have a translation. It's done by another monk, and I have uh, edited a little bit. So we have Itipiso, such as he. Bhagava is the blessed one. Araham is the worthy one who has destroyed greed, hatred, and delusion. I'm repeating myself a lot because the purpose is for you to know what this means through repetition. Samma Sambuddho is the perfectly enlightened Buddha, self-enlightened Buddha. The Vijjacharana Sampano is the one endowed with 
understanding and good conduct or knowledge and conduct. Sugato is one who is well gone. Loka we do is the knower of the worlds, as I explained before, the tiloka, knowing that there's no end to samsara. Anuttaro Purisadhamma Sarati is the unsurpassed guide for those people who need taming or those who are able to be tamed. And please remember that Dhamma means uh, it's different from Dhamma. The Satta Deva Manusanam is the teacher of gods and men. Buddha is the Buddha, as we know and love. And Bhagava is the fortunate one or the blessed one. So why is this important? Well, of course, it's the Buddha's qualities. So it's important to reflect on the Buddha's qualities, and you can use that as a meditation. It can calm down the mind, and it can help you reflect on, on who your teacher was. Because if you're watching this video, you're a Buddhist, and you need to know who your teacher is and what are the qualities of your teacher. It's very important. It is the second most widely chanted verse. Most chantings will have the Itibiso Bhagavad chant, whether it's the morning chanting or the evening chanting uh, or one or the other. It's very important and it's always widely chanted because it's very important. They also chant the, the qualities of the Dhamma, they chant the qualities of the Sangha. I have a, a web page, uh, an article, uh, on the most basic Pali chants to learn. So if you're interested in Pali chants, which you probably are because you're watching this video, especially to the end, uh, then you, uh, you would want to take a look at that. And I have some other chants that are very essential for one who considers themselves a Theravada Buddhist to, to learn. There's also a practice called Bud Buddha Nusati, and this is the uh, reflection on the nine qualities of the Buddha. So some people you might see, they might have these beads, these counting beads, rosary beads. And uh, the Buddhist monks uh, quite often are seen walking with these beads and uh, counting. And what they're doing is they are chanting Itipiso, Bhagava, Arahamsama, Sambuddho, etc., etc. And for one round, they will have one bead, and then they do another round, and then they will move their, their, their hand uh, to increment one more bead. There are 108 beads in a mala. In an, it, uh, it's like a necklace of beads. And uh, we only count 100. There are some people who have done millions in their lives. Uh, one of the uh, chief monks of our, who is now deceased, Bhante Arya Dhamma, he has done over a million. I, I'm not really sure about the number, but I know it's over a million. And they know the qualities so well that after a while, they don't need to chant the words in their mind. They can go through all the, they can go through all of the qualities and uh, within a couple of seconds, within a second even. And I, so even one of my friends was able to do this. I've seen other people do this. And uh, this is a form of concentration. It's one of the 40 samatha objects listed in the Visuddhimagga. So this can calm down your mind. And when the Buddha was alive, just his presence uh, reflected those qualities. And people were able to become very calm. And this is how they were able to listen to a discourse and be able to uh, be, have a calm mind and able to and be able to see nama and rupa and the mind and matter and its causes in order to attain, attain nibbana. Let's do the verse one more time. Itibi so, let's, uh, let's chant together. Itibi so bhagavara ham samma sambuddho vinja charana sambano sugato loka vidu Anuttaro purisadamma sariti satha deva manusanam buddho bhagavati. So, may you be able to reflect on the nine qualities of the Buddha. May you be able to calm down your mind as one of the 40 
samatha concentration objects. May you have a calm mind, be able to see mind and matter and its causes, and through that, develop the vipassana knowledges, the insight knowledges, so that you can attain nibbana safely and quickly. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.